Quillfish is another one of those Pokemon that Game Freak seemingly decided to hide. Unless you got a specific trainer's phone number on Route 32, it would never show up without the Super Rod. And as a result of that, I never had one on my childhood team. So, have we been missing out on something special, or is it just another average fish Pokemon? And just before we get into Quillfish's run, I want to say thank you to all of you for your kind words about the Noctowl challenge. It really was something special, and if you haven't seen it, I really would recommend giving it a watch. There's a lot of magic in that run. But let's now turn our attentions back towards Quillfish, and have you ever had a Quillfish on your playthrough team? I certainly haven't, and I think the reason is I've always found another Water-type Pokémon before Quillfish pops up in the wild. And as a result of that, I had literally no idea how Quillfish would fare before starting this run. So Quillfish is one of those Pokémon I have definitely been incredibly excited to try. So let's now take a look at the stats of our starter Quillfish. We are of course level 5 as always, and we have 21 HP. We're holding a berry and our moves are Spikes, Tackle and Poison Sting. We have 15 in attack, 12 in defense, 11 in the specials and 13 in speed. And very quickly before we get the run underway, I'm going to swap Tackle and Spikes around. That just means we're going to have an easier time in all of those battles. And as always, I'm going to show you the very first encounter we have with the wild Pokemon. In this instance, it's a level 3 Hoot Hoot, we critical hit on the first turn and we knock it out on our second turn. We're going to grind up to level 8 before entering Mr. Pokemon's house, and it's at this point I will tell you I used the Universal Pokemon Randomizer to replace Cyndaquil with Quillfish. Quillfish has the type advantage over both Chikorita and Cyndaquil, and that means that the only suitable Pokemon for the rival to have is Totodile. And talking of the rival, we're going to battle him right now. We use Poison Sting against the rival, and we don't poison him on the first turn, but we do on the second turn, and then we just get to tackling. A very quick rival battle later, and we have defeated him, and we can make our way back towards Elm's Pokemon Lab. In the lab, of course, we tell the police officer that the rival's name is Triple Question Mark, and the challenge run is well and truly underway. Our first destination is Violet City, and just before we get there, if you're enjoying this run, please do click the like button, and if you want to see more content just like this, then please do think about subscribing. But we are now in the gym, and we're going to beat up the Bird Keeper Abe Spiro. Tackle is by far our best move at the moment, so we're just going to keep spamming that and we grow to level 10. At level 10 we have the option to learn a couple of moves. We decline learning Minimalize, but we learn Harden, and that's just in time to take on Falconer. He's our first gym leader together, he's a flying type specialist who leads with Pidgey. Falconer has Mud Slap, so our best plan is to get the poison off, and that's what we do on turn 1, and then we just get to tackling the Pidgey. We're going to be dealing passive damage regardless of whether we hit his Pokemon now, and we're going to use the same strategy against the Pidgeotto. We got very lucky with Poison Sting there, because on turn 1 both times we poisoned the enemy Pokemon, and that definitely helps us get through this battle unscathed, because we've defeated Falconer and we get the Zephyr Badge in a time of 7 minutes and 25 seconds. Let's now move on from Violet City and make our way towards Route 32 and the Union Cave. Just before we enter the routes, we're going to pick up that very important Paralyzed Cure Berry, and then from Union Cave, we're going to pick up the Swift TM. Swift is a far, far better move than Tackle, so we're going to teach that straight away, because not only are we getting almost double the power, we're getting 100% accuracy that never, ever misses. And with that, we're through the cave and into the Ilex Forest. And of course, in the Ilex Forest, we catch our HM friends. And showing their face first today is Psyduck. On Team Psyduck, amongst many other names, we have William St. Germain, Mud Harvey, Hyabusa, we have Simon Atkins, we have iPrisms, we have Nikolai Tesla, we have SK, we have Adrian Riojas, and we have Dylan Davis. And next up is Paris. On Team Paris, we have Metal Hammer, we have Paul Anthony, Andrew the Sanctuary, Peachley, Frenchie, Vettler, Seaduke, Muda, and Gemma Barnes. And now with the HM Friends courts, we can make our way into Bugsy's Gym. He is our second leader together, he's a bug type specialist who leads with Metapod. We have a bit of a type advantage going into this gym, and Swift is doing an awful lot of damage. It's a two-shot on the Metapod, and it's also a two-shot on the Kakuna, and that just leaves his Scyther left. Fury Cutter does next to nothing at all, so he tries a Leer. That doesn't work either, neither does Quick Attack. We knock out the Scyther, we grow to level 19, and we get the option to learn Water Gun. We're going to get rid of Harden in place of Water Gun, and we've defeated Bugsy in a time of 16 minutes and 34 seconds. Of course, we can't celebrate for too long, though, because Rival 2 is just around the corner. This time, though, we have a bit of a weird situation with him. 
We're both going to be not very effective against the other with our water type moves, and that will give Quillfish an advantage over an awful lot of other water type Pokemon. We're through his Ghastly, and we're already through his Zubat as well, getting confused en route, and that just leaves Croconaw left to go. We're taking off roughly a third of its health each time with Swift, so it's just three shots to knock it out, and we're through the rival without even having to heal beforehand. And that means we can now make our way back into the Ilex Forest where we have a couple of bits to pick up. The first thing of course is cuts from the Charcoal Maker, and the second thing is headbutts from the green-haired man staring at the tree. In a lot of runs where we pick up headbutt we don't end up needing to use it, but it's always nice to have it in our back pocket just in case we need to flinch something. But now let's catch our third HM friend, Abra. And on Team Abra, amongst many other names, we have Combe, we have Sombrero Faro, we have Andrew Van Elk, and we have William Osborne, we have Austin, we have SSJ Derp, and we have Nate Boyd. While we're in Goldenrod, we'll also pick up the bike so that we can move in double quick time, and it's time to pick up our final HM friend. This one, of course, is Kenya. On Team Kenya, amongst many other people, we have Francesco, Floor Inspect, Benjo, Nichols, Deadpool, Jack Harris, Sven, Travis Blakenship, Ashley Carey, Wolf, and Tom Fanto. And if you want to join the HM friends and pick your team, there is a link in the description. But now let's move on to Whitney's Gym. She is our third leader together. She's a normal type specialist who leads with Clefairy. We use Swift on Clefairy, and it's looking like a two shot as Clefairy metronomes lock on, and we're on to the Mill Tank. Mill Tank starts to roll but gets an unlucky miss on turn 2. That gives us a very easy in to get the victory in a very quick time of 23 minutes and 38 seconds. And that was a surprisingly smooth Whitney battle. Our reward for defeating Whitney is the Squirts bottle, so we go into the flower shop next door, talk to the sister first, and then pick it up, and that means we can go and annoy that Pseudo Wudo. Now, in the Pseudo Wudo battle, I want to point out that the physical attack will change from 60 to 67. That's because in Generation 2, certain badges give you boosts to specific stats. So for instance, the Zephyr badge from Falconer gives you a 12.5% boost to your physical attack stats in battle, and then Whitney's Plane badge gives you a 12.5% boost to your speed. So the stats may sometimes seem to be a little bit wonky, but they're always a true reflection of what we have in battle. And I've waffled for so long, we've already beaten up the Kimono Girls and we've got Surf off the man staring at the stage. So we're now going to replace Water Gun with Surf because it's a strong water type move even though our special attack isn't that great and we'll make our way towards the Moomoo Farm to pick up the Mince Berry. After that it's a quick teleport back into Ecrotic City and into the Burnt Tower. The third rival battle is waiting for us and this one I can only see going one way. We have Surf on our learn set and we have a lot of speed. So we surf all over the Haunter and knock it out in one hit and Magnemite goes the same way. Out comes Zubat and Surf makes light work of that as well, and then we get to swifting the Croconaw. Croconaw puts up a wee bit of resistance taking three shots to knock out, but we were never in any danger of fainting in that battle, and the rival is done for the third time. We'll now drop down onto the bottom floor, we'll release the beasts, and we can think about taking on our next gym. Fortunately for us, our next gym is just a few doors away. It is Morty's Ghost and Poison type gym. He is our fourth gym leader together, and he will lead with Ghastly. Ghastly, of course, is quite weak, but is speedy, but we outspeed it to knock it out with a single surf. It's a repeat of that performance against the Haunter, and we're on to the Gengar. Gengar's got a lot of bulk, but Hypnosis misses, so it's two shots on that, and then we finish off his final Haunter. We've defeated Morty in a time of 30 minutes and 44 seconds, and now we're going to do things slightly out of order to normal. We're going to head up to the Lake of Rage, and we're going to take on the Red Gyarados now. Before we get there though, we're going to pick up the Rare Candy just north of the Gyarados, and we're going to pick up Hidden Power. In this instance, our Hidden Power type is Bug, and we'll be seeing that a little bit later on. We'll take a quick cycle back to the Lake of Rage proper, and we'll engage the Gyarados in battle. This, I believe, is the intended sequence of the game. Game Freak wanted you to take on the Red Gyarados when you were roughly level 30 yourself, so he is a little bit of a threat, but we got through with no issue whatsoever, and we can have a chat with Lance the Liar with the Flyers. He takes us through the Mahogany Hideout, and in the Hideout we taught Headbutt over Swift just for PP management, but it was a short but sweet foray with Headbutt this time. We're going to pick up another TM, and then we'll have our final learn set for the run. We're picking up Sludge Bomb, which is the entire reason we did the rocket section early, and we're going to teach Hidden Power and Sludge Bomb over Headbutt and Poison Sting. So our final learn set for this run is Hidden Power Bug, Spike, Surf, and Sludge Bomb. 
and I always like getting our final learn set as early as possible, because that means I can get into a groove and really get to know what I'm dealing with. But while we're in Mahogany Town, we might as well take on Price's Ice Gym. He is our fifth gym leader together, and he leads with Seal. We do use Sludge Bomb on the Seal, and it's a one shot to knock it out. It's two shots on the Dugong with Sludge Bomb, and we didn't quite get a poison. And we're on to the Pilot Swine. Pilot Swine, of course, being weak to water, it's a single surf. And we have defeated Price in a time of 39 minutes and 2 seconds. So let's now move on and do something a little bit more familiar. We're going to teleport back to Ecratique City, and we're going to make our way towards Olivine. And the first thing we do in Olivine City, of course, is pick up strength from the man in the cafe. And after that, it's going to be a quick trip up to the top of the lighthouse. At the top of the lighthouse, of course, Jasmine is waiting for us. Poor, poor Amphi is a little bit sick again, and we need to get it some medication. So we'll pick up the rare candy at the top of the lighthouse as well, and we'll make our way over to Cyanwood City. And of course, the first thing we'll do in Cyanwood City is pick up the medication from the man in the dodgy shop. After that, it's going to be a quick trip into Chuck's fighting gym, where our sixth badge is waiting for us. This, of course, is Chuck. He is a fighting type specialist who will lead with Primeape. We use Sludge Bomb against the Primeape, and it's an easy one-shot, and we're onto the Polyrath. Polyrath gets taken into the yellow, but hits us with Dynamic Punch. We break through the confusion, though, to knock it out in a second shot, and we have defeated Chuck in a time of 43 minutes and 20 seconds. This battle was one of the reasons why we got Sludge Bomb early, and we'll reap the rewards of that by picking up the Fly HM from Chuck's wife. We'll now fly straight back to Olivine City, we'll reascend the lighthouse once more, and we'll give the medication to Jasmine. Jasmine allegedly gives that medication to Amphi, although I'm still not too sure, so we'd better hotfoot it to the gym to make sure we can find out exactly what she is doing. This is Jasmine, our seventh leader together, she's a Steel-type specialist who will lead with Magnemite. Magnemite's not got great special defense, so Surf knocks it out in one shot. Surf does exactly the same against Magnemite number two. And then out comes Steelix, it's weak to water as Surf takes care of it. And we have Jasmine's badge in a time of 44 minutes and 28 seconds. That's seven badges acquired, it's now time to do a little bit of housekeeping. The first thing we'll do is pop into Goldenrod City where we'll pick up the return TM. We might not need it on this run, but it's always good to have anyway. We'll then go over to Violet City and pick up the rare candy outside of the Sprout Tower. And while we're in the area, we might as well ascend the Sprout Tower and pick up the Flash HM from Elder Lee. After that, it's a quick trip south onto Route 32 where we encounter Entei. I quite often encounter the legendary beasts on these runs. However, it's very rare that they come in at a time where I can actually show them on the video. We're coming to Route 32 to have a little chat with Frida of Friday. She's going to give us the Poison Barb, which will give us a 10% boost to our Poison-type moves. But we're now back in Goldenrod City, where we are going to take on the rival for the fourth time. And this time, he's going to lead with Golbat. We send out Pointy the Quillfish, and we get to surfing. He doesn't confuse Rayas, and then we finish it off with a Sludge Bomb. Up next is Magnemite, and Surf is still a one-shot on that pesky Magnemite line. Out comes Horn, so we continue using Surf and we knock it out in one shot. Sneasel's next, we use another Surf to one shot that, and his final Pokemon is Feraligator. It's two hits with Sludge Bomb with Poisoning on the Feraligator, and that was a very easy fourth rival battle. And with nothing of great importance happening on the rest of the rocket section, we'll go to the very top of the radio tower where we've rescued the director. And after rescuing him, we can pick up some rewards. We're going to get the pink bow from Marie, and we're also going to pick up the radio card from the desk. We need this radio card to get through all of Kanto, so it's very important to remember it. We'll do a quick fly over to Cherry Grove City to pick up the mystic water from this man all on his own on a little island, and then we'll head back to Mahogany Town. East of Mahogany Town is the Ice Path, and that is our next destination. We've only got one important item to pick up this time, and that's HMO7, which is Waterfall. So we'll make our way through the rest of the Ice Path and think about taking on Claire. Claire is our eighth gym leader together. She is a Dragon-type specialist, and she will lead with three pesky Dragonair. We have Sludge Bomb on our learn set, though, so it's a one-shot on Dragonair number one. Sludge Bomb is really showing its power combined with our 140 in-battle attack stat, because we one-shot all three of those Dragonair, and up next is the Kingdra. We poison the Kingdra, and unfortunately it goes into healing range, so this battle is a little bit slower than it otherwise would have been. However, we still get Claire's badge in a very, very quick time. We go through the Dragon's Den, and we pick up our badge in a time of 1 hour, 1 minute, and 32 seconds. For a Pokemon that is very, very ignored by a lot of us, we are on such an incredible pace. 
We'll now make our way towards the Pokemon League where our rival is waiting for us for the very last time. This time he is going to lead with Sneasel and honestly I think this is going to be a foregone conclusion. Out comes the Sneasel, we use Sludge Bomb this time and it's a one shot, so he tries again with Magneton. We surf all over the Magneton and it goes down in a single hit, so he sends out Kadabra. We use Hidden Power Bug on the Kadabra and it's super effective to knock it out in one hit. We go back to Surf for the Golbat and it's not quite a one shot, but once again he doesn't confuse us. We continue surfing for the Haunter and take it out in a single hit, so he sends out for Alligator. Back to Sludge Bomb and it's going to be a two shot and we poison to rub salt in the wounds and we defeat the rival for the final time in a time of 1 hour 6 minutes and 22 seconds. So the rival put up a little bit of resistance this run but still nothing too great. Now that we're in the Pokemon League we will heal up our Pokemon and we'll say thank you to the HM friends. We say thank you to Kenya, to Abra, to Psyduck and to Paris. You all get a lovely little rest while we take on the League. We'll buy our four full restores whether we need them or not. And now before we enter the league we're going to take a look at our stats in big. We are level 53 and we have 164 HP. Our held item is the poison barb and our moves are surf, hidden power, spikes and sludge bomb. We have 139 in attack, 116 in defense, 96 in the specials and 129 in speed. They're the stats we have going into the league and our first league member is William St. Germain. He is a psychic type specialist who leads with Zatu. We surf over the Zatu and we get confused because it's not a one shot and we're on to Jinx. We work our way through the confusion with the Jinx and knock it out with a single hidden power bug and he sends out Slowbro. Slowbro's bulkier but is still weak to bugs so we hidden power it once more to take it into the yellow. We snap out of confusion and knock it out with another hit. We go to Sludge Bomb for the level 42 Zato and knock it out in one hit and we might as well use Hidden Power Bug against the Executor because it's four times weak. We knock out Will on our first try in a time of 1 hour 7 minutes and 55 seconds. Up next is Koga, he's another poison type specialist just like us. He led with Ariados but it's already gone down. Up next is Venomoth, we surf on it but we don't knock it out and we take some super effective psychic damage but we're well in the green as the fortress comes out. We two shot the fortress with surf and we are on to Muck. Muck minimalizes and this is where the battle falls apart a little bit. We miss our surfs left, right and centre as he's chipping away with Sludge Bomb. We do eventually knock it out and we're on 60 HP for the Crobat. We take Crobat into the yellow with our first turn, we knock it out on our second turn and we're through Koga in a time of 1 hour 8 minutes and 43 seconds. Up next is Bruno and while old spinny legs here has dig he doesn't get a chance to use it because we knock it out with sludge bomb. Up next is Hitmonchan and that has exactly the same fate as the Hitmontop as does Hitmonlee as well. We're doing very well in this battle so far and it's not going to change against the Onyx. Four times weak to surf so it goes down and his final Pokemon is Machamp. We take him deep into the red with sludge bomb and rock slide hits us for a little bit of damage. He heals up and we start the process all over again. We finish it off with surf and we are through Bruno in a time of 1 hour 9 minutes and 26 seconds. Up next is Karen. Karen of course being notorious for stopping a run in its tracks. We get sand attack so we're going to take a quick reset to see if we can get better accuracy on the next turn. Unfortunately it doesn't happen but we set up spikes around her remaining Pokemon. We two shot the Umbreon and we are on to the Vile Plume. We're going to sludge bomb the Vile Plume and it's going to be a one shot even though it's neutral so she sends out Gengar. I misclick on Hidden Power here and that was the big misplay of this run. Surf misses Destiny Bond hits and we have to take a reset. Back to square one we go and we're going to do the same opening as last time. We set up the spikes and then hidden power the Umbreon as it hits us with sand attack. Back onto the Vile Plume and it's definitely going to be a one shot for sure with those spikes digging in. Here comes Gengar. We surf first turn this time and it still swears at us so we are on a clock for the final two Pokemon. We surf all over the Murkrow and get a lucky critical hit to knock it out and the final Pokemon is Houndoom. Surf hits, we knock it out and we are through Karen in a time of 1 hour 11 minutes and 49 seconds. And there is now only one thing between us and the Hall of Fame. It's the liar with the flies, it's time for Lance. He's a supposed dragon type specialist but I think he's a flying type specialist and he leads with Gyarados. Gyarados flails and takes us down to 121 HP as Dragonite number one comes out. We get paralysed and we're going to take a reset, we don't want that quartered speed. So we'll start exactly how we did last time, this time holding a paralysed Cureberry. We're onto the Dragonite once more and yet again Thunder Wave hits. 
That means that we cannot afford to get paralyzed against Dragonite number two. Unfortunately for us though, even though we poisoned it, he hits us with a paralysis and a critical hit hyper beam. There was absolutely no way we were winning that battle from there, so let's reset. Sludge Bomb against the Gyarados, and this time we poison it. He's going to use Flail to take us down to 145, and we're on to Dragonite number one yet again. Thunder Wave gets a Gen 2 miss, and that is what we needed to get through this battle. Because that means even with Dragonite number 2 Thunder Wave hitting, we are not being paralysed from the Thunder Wave. He sent out his level 50 Dragonite in third spot because his final two Pokemon are going to be weak to water. So we're going to surf all over the Charizard and knock it out in one shot, and we'll do exactly the same for the Aerodactyl. No Scarodactyl in this run as we knock it out in one and we defeat Lance in a time of 1 hour 13 minutes and 45 seconds. And our league time is 1 hour 14 minutes and 1 second. That is a very, very quick run so far. Not record breaking, but still impressive. Don't you dare go anywhere, Kanto is next. And we're back where it all began outside our home in Newbark Town, where Professor Elm has a present for us. He's going to give us the SS ticket and that'll allow us to get to the main chunk of Kanto. Before we go there though, we've got a couple of bits and bobs to fix here in the Johto region. The first thing we're going to do is say a warm welcome back to Kenya, Abra, Psyduck and Paris. And now we're going to go into Mount Morta. In Mount Morta, we're going to pick up one of our two rare candies here left in the Johto region. We'll also go over to the Whirl Islands. Now you might have noticed I dipped my head in Olivine City's Pokemon Center there. That means I can teleport back to Olivine City's Pokemon Center and save a little bit of time in the menu. But now we're in Kanto and the first thing we do in Kanto is the last thing we do in Johto. We're going to grab another rare candy, this time from the chairman of the Pokemon Fan Club. We're going to cycle through Saffron City next, not taking in any of the sites, because we need to visit Celadon City. The first thing we'll do in Celadon City is pick up the leftovers from the bin in the cafe. We'll get the PP up from the bush, and now it's time to take on our ninth gym leader. This is Erica, the grass type specialist who leads with Tangler. We are, of course, going to use Hidden Power Bug on the Tangler to save on some Sludge Bomb PP, and then we'll go to Sludge Bomb for the Victory Bell. We get a critical hit and knock it out in one shot, and we go back to Hidden Power Bug for the Belossum. And already we're on to her final Pokémon. Jumpluff isn't weak to Bug, but it's still a two shot, so we knock it out, and we're through Sabrina in a time of 1 hour 18 minutes and 27 seconds. Up next is Misty. And it's Water Type Specialist versus Water Type Specialist, but I have Sludge Bomb on my learn set. We use that against the Golduck and we surf against the Quagsire. We're going to swap back to Sludge Bomb for the Lapras. We get a lucky critical hit to knock it out in one shot, and that just leaves Starmie. We've got Hidden Power Bug for the Starmie that is super effective. We grow to level 62 and we obtain the Cascade Badge in a time of 1 hour 22 minutes and 42 seconds. Up next is what should arguably be one of our hardest gyms, however we've got Hidden Power Bug. So Espeon goes down in one shot and Mr. Mime goes exactly the same way and that just leaves Alakazam. We outspeed the Alakazam, we knock it out with a Hidden Power Bug and we're through Sabrina in a time of 1 hour 23 minutes and 21 seconds. Up next is Surge. Now Surge could be a little bit tricky because he's an electric type leader, but we have Surf and we're fast. So we outspeed the Raichu and knock it out in one. We outspeed the Magneton and also knock that out in one, so he sends out Electabuzz. We swap to Sludge Bomb for the Electabuzz and we knock it out in a single hit, and that just leaves two Electrode. Electrode 1 says goodbye, as does Electrode 2 with a single Sludge Bomb each. And that means we're through Surge's gym in a time of 1 hour 24 minutes and 36 seconds. Our final gym in this rapid fire buffet is Brock. He is a rock type specialist who led with Graveler but it's already gone down. As does the Rhyhorn because that has virtually no special defense and of course it's 4 times weak to water. He sends out Omastar but that is not the star of the show, it's our Quillfish. Kabutops got topped and the final Pokemon is Onix. Onix is also 4 times weak to water so it gets knocked out and we have Brock's Boulder Badge in a time of 1 hour 25 minutes and 44 seconds. Let's now go through the Viridian Hedge Maze and take on 3-Drill. It's Poison-type versus Poison-type here, and I love taking on 3-Drill. He's become a real character in my runs. He's very, very weak. He's only got 3 level 30 B-Drill, but it really is quite fun taking him on. Initially, when I kept getting hit by him, I was very frustrated, but I've made my peace with him. I'm still trying to figure out the names. We've had some great suggestions for B-Drills 1, 2, and 3. 
But now at Cinnabar Island, we'll have a little chat with Blue, we'll pick up the rare candy, and we'll surf east towards the Seafoam Islands where Blaine is waiting for us. He is our 14th gym leader together, he's a fire type specialist, and this is a foregone conclusion. Macargo four times weak to water gets knocked out, the bumhead fired up comes out, also gets surfed away, and the Rapidash isn't rapid enough for him. It's a one shot on all of his Pokemon to defeat him in a time of 1 hour 27 minutes and 14 seconds. Our penultimate gym leader is everyone's favourite pushover, it's Janine. Janine's Crobat gets knocked out in one shot and here comes another Venomoth. Venomoth is one hit as well and we're on to the Weezing. Weezing's a one shot with Surf and we are just sweeping up. We've got our broom in our mouth and we are going through all of her Pokemon. Every single Pokemon is a one shot, we're through Janine in a time of 1 hour 27 minutes and 54 seconds. Our final gym leader is Blue, and let's see if Blue can pick up the slack for the other Cantonian gym leaders. We're going to start off with the Spikes and Pidgeot Mirror Move Spikes, and that is absolutely useless. We only have one Pokemon in our party. We then get to Sludge Bombing, and it's a two shot on the Pidgeot. He sends out Alakazam next, but we have Hidden Power Bug, and that combined with the Spikes makes it an easy one shot. Up next is Rhydon, and you'd better not take your Rhydon out in the rain, because even a single drop of water would knock it out. And we're on to Gyarados. We use Sludge Bomb on the Gyarados and get the poison. That takes him into healing range, but I don't mind because he's now stuck in a healing loop. That lets us recover all of our HP, and when he runs out of full restores, we hit it with Sludge Bomb and we knock it out in two. Blue's penultimate Pokemon is Executor. Executor is four times weak to bugs, so we knock it out with Hidden Power, and his final Pokemon is Arcanine. The spikes dig into Arcanine and the Surf finishes it off, and we're through Blue in a time of 1 hour 29 minutes and 18 seconds. And that's it. We have all 16 gym badges. There's only one challenge left to go. We've got to face red. We're at around about the 90 minute mark right now, so let me know in the comments. How quickly will Quillfish finish? Will we have a really tough time at red, or will we keep this momentum going? So let me know down below as I tell you that this is red. He is our final obstacle of the run, and he leads, of course, with Pikachu. Pikachu comes out and we outspeed it. Sludge Bomb is a one shot and we are on to Espeon. Espeon sees the KO with Psychic though and instantly knocks us out in one hit. Let's use some rare candies, there is absolutely no way we can cheese that Espeon. We'll try again, this time at level 69. Pikachu is totally irrelevant, it's going to be knocked out in one shot every time we attack it. We outspeed the Espeon now and we take it deep into the red, but we still don't survive a Psychic. Up we go another three levels. We are now at level 72. And this time we're going to take the risk against the Pikachu and set up spikes. It didn't work on our first attempts because we got hit by Thunder, but we'll just try again. Thunder isn't a very accurate move and his charm fails this time, so we set up the spikes and we get to Sludge Bombing. That means we're through the Pikachu and we're on to the Espeon. Hidden Power takes it deep into the red, but not quite enough to get the KO, and we get knocked out. We're going to have to use our final four rare candies. There are no ifs, ands, or buts about this run. We have to use the rare candies because Espeon is just too strong. We're through the Pikachu once more and we are on to Espeon. Espeon gets hit by the spikes and at level 76 we knock it out in one. Out comes Snorlax and Snorlax takes a little bit of damage from the spikes. We take it down into the yellow with Sludge Bomb as he uses Amnesia. Another Sludge Bomb knocks it out and we are on to the Venusaur. We carry on Sludge Bombing and it's a two shot on the Venusaur before it even gets a chance to hit. Blastoise is next and we're going to continue Sludge Bombing. Deep into the yellow it goes as Blastoise misses and another Sludge Bomb later it is out of here. The final Pokemon is Charizard. We take it deep into the yellow with our first hit, another Sludge Bomb knocks it out and we are through red in a time of 1 hour 33 minutes and 49 seconds. And who the thunk it? Spike saved the day. Not only did it make the Espeon a one shot, it also made the Snorlax a two shot. I was a little bit worried about keeping it on the learn set from level 1, but I think it paid dividends. And 1 hour 33.49 means that Quillfish is in 6th place. That is a lot higher than I expected. It means that poor Noctowl only got one run on page 1, but I am still very very proud of both it and Quillfish. And then over on page 2, Noctowl is now heading up the leaders. At the very bottom we have Makargo in a time of 3.47.49, and we are still on the hunt for a Pokemon slower. 
But with that, we are done. So I'm going to say thank you all so much for watching. It's been a pleasure, as always. If you've enjoyed this run, please do click the like button. If you want to see more runs just like this, then click subscribe. I have a Patreon at patreon.com slash trainersquidgy. And until next time, I'll say thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all very, very soon.